Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and had a request to do a video on how to create brushes, and I'm no master at this, but I, I think I can at least help the beginners get going um, and, and show you some neat things with brushes. Now what I've got here is two windows open. I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop CC 2014, obviously, as it says right there, so I guess I didn't have to say that. Um, I've got a window open at 500 by 500 pixels, I believe. Um, which is a little bit big for a brush. You can go down to like 200 by 200, but um, I, I like, you know, just in case I do a more detailed brush like I just did here, um, I feel it'll capture the data a little bit better. But if your system bogs down, go down to the, the 200 by 200. So what I did here is I wanted to create kind of like this alien spine thingamabobber. So what I did is I drew this out real quick. I drew one side, flipped it. You know, always take advantage of the tools that you can use digitally to make stuff like this. And then when I come over to my other window, I've got a bigger 10 inch by 10 inch at 300 DPI window open to kind of test my brush. I can take it over here, upscale it. Again, I'm using the bracket keys to up and down scale the brush. And I've already played with the settings a bit, and I'll show you what I got. I've got like this kind of alien spine looking thing, which, you know, um, I'll make this for download available at my Ram Studios 1.dvnr also. But what I like about doing stuff like this is I can quickly make, you know, something cool and techy looking like that or whatever, or alien looking, um, and then shade it and add some highlights and make it my own so it doesn't just look as flat as it did there. But the cool thing about it is you just go over to these settings, and after you've got your initial brush, I'll tell you what, I'll actually start with the brush. And I made a few here. Um, I'll go through maybe a couple of them, and I'll show you how to make your own. So once you get there to that brush, uh, you go over to your, your brush settings here, and you just you just kind of play with this stuff over here. So right now I've got it set to the basic setting, and you know, it looks cool, but obviously not what you just saw there. So when you get into these brush settings over here, you're just going to play with things like, you know, I always put transfer on because I'm doing more digital paint work. Uh, control and uh, an opacity jitter and flow jitter both set to pen pressure. And then for something like this, I'll show you what you get on each step. You know, so it's starting to look cool. You know, I could see that being a good texture brush to, to do some digital paint work. Uh, me personally, I would tone the opacity down and then work with it like this. And as I overlap strokes, um, you know, I get a little bit of cool grain and texture in there, if you can see that. So that's one thing. Um, but that's not what I was going for with this particular brush. I'll show you another one for that. Um, so back into the brush settings. Whoops. Make sure I'm on the pen. Back into the brush settings, uh, go to brush tip shape, and then start adjusting your spacing. And you can see the uh, the veins or the barbs, I guess, that are starting to show up there. So now I'll try it again, and see you're getting a nice kind of you know reptilian skin texture or whatever. Um, and, and I could very easily convert this to be a cool snake skin brush by just getting away with you know changing the edges of the design. Uh, to not be so barbed, which I could probably work with that anyways because I would probably begin to shade uh, if I was picturing, you know, doing a, a, a snake design or whatever. Um, I would probably begin to shade the outsides like this anyways to round that form out. And then I would bring in uh, the dodge tool or something and highlight across the barbs, you know, because you, you don't want to see every detail in there. The more, you know, if it's overly detailed, um, it's going to look too repetitive and not realistic so you're going to want to blend some of that texture down but it, the texture is there to start which uh, which is a major time saver so okay that's enough of explaining that now what I'll do is I'll go through and actually show you how to make the brush um, again I want to show you that I went through a couple you know trial and errors before I got there and made like this weird splash one this actually ended up being a really good hair brush uh, so I'll show you that before we're done um, so, all right, so new screen, control A, delete, set to white, boom, that's out of the way. Uh, grab a regular brush to draw with. I use this little uh, little blobby one, uh, and I've got it set to where it's like a, like a pen, or like an ink, you know, ink pen kind of thing. Okay, so now uh, for making a brush, let's, let's try, um, I want to start with something basic for you. You know, if you're doing a lot of digital painting and stuff, you're gonna look at what you know what texture the brush creates. Um, so if you got like a, a wild shape, you know, 
then you got to look at the edges or the inside of it because when it overlaps that's what you're going to get you know for your texture so i'll zoom back a little bit because i don't want to overly draw this one um let's try i'm just going to try some scribbled out lines let's see what we come up with on this because again i'm looking at this more of a a digital painting brush so i'm looking at the texture of it not the not the shape of it so much and then a couple little artifacts to the side because uh, again that's going to give a different texture so let's go for something like this and actually what i'm going to do too is i'm going to hit x and i'm going to paint back with white i'm going to open up some of the middle a little bit and i could be wrong this may do nothing at all but i, I want to show you you know how to you know how to just play with this and, and get your own effects And you know in a lot of my other videos I talk about how to not overly rely on this stuff and I, I still swear by that uh, you can spend a lot of time getting into custom brushes so you know don't let that supersede your your practice and your ability just to paint with the most basic of brushes too okay so there I've painted some black and white texture in uh, I don't know if this will work or not I just I'm just kind of you know gonna see what happens here so now go to edit define brush preset uh, I'll call this Rob's Stipple Texture Thingy Brush. So I really don't know what this is. And see how it immediately jumped to that brush. It's already ready to go uh, from the most basic setting. So I'll put it on black. I'll test dab it. Okay, that's what we got. And what I usually do is I start with the first opaque effect. And, you know, immediately I, I like that because... It looks like uh, something I could use for my comic book illustration for a cool ink block texture. I always flip it back and forth and kind of see what it looks like when I just, you know, dab it around. I uh, actually like it even more now because, yeah, that edging is looking pretty cool for, again, a background element to uh, inking a comic book, which I'm all about. So, very cool. So, that, that immediately is, you know, a keeper right there. As quick as that. So now, I'll, but I, I tended this to be a digital painting brush. So uh, I immediately go to transfer, both set the pen pressure. That's that's like my favorite uh, setup for this stuff. And then I just, you know, kind of paint that in. Yep, and I'm even liking that more. Um, I immediately, the reason I'm swaying it back and forth and overlapping, I'm, I'm looking at the, the grain that it's creating and the texture. And I like that a lot. That actually looks a lot like a, a canvas paper or you know something with some grit and some texture to it uh, which is always good for for uh, digital painting even you know so far this is a really good brush just for backgrounds so let's take it a step further um, go back in here uh, the next one I would probably mess with I'll go to brush tip shape, uh, brush tip shape I'm gonna drop the uh, spacing all the way down this is gonna eliminate more of the textures in the inside and the artifacts on the inside but it's going to, you know, let me look at, you know, if this was more of a marker type, type brush. Now it is lagging a bit, so maybe, I, you know, that's this might be one where I want to do a, uh, a lower uh, 200 pixel by 200 pixel. Because uh, you don't want it to lag too much. Um, that's not bad. That's nothing special, though. The only thing that's cool about that is the way that it ends. Uh, but I've got plenty of brushes like that. Um, even the chalk brush I use 90% of the time I like a little bit better as far as that goes so let me go back into here now let me up the spacing and that'll add more of the texture yeah see and I'm, I'm more of a fan of this brush because of that texture that it's creating I like that a lot it almost looks like um, you know a basket or something like a, a weave um, and, and things like that are, are highly helpful when you're you're trying to paint stuff um, you know, you might even be able to dab and get that original texture back that we were seeing. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. You know, it's it's basic. I mean, I don't know if you do this on a ton of stuff, but for digital painting, it's pretty cool. Um, now, the other thing, you know, and, and you want to get in here, and I could spend all day talking about all these different settings. You know, you can dual texture where you basically click on this and you, you add uh, more of a texture inside of it uh, by grabbing like one of these guys. You know, and it, it makes it into a little bit different, you know, texture style, which that can be cool and fun. 
again for digital painting that's great um, dual brush same kind of thing and you can actually pay, pick one of your other brushes combine the two and it you know it kind of oh there it I guess it makes kind of a neat little ink blot but it, you know you're just gonna have to play with all that because there's tons of settings in there uh, the main ones that I use are the ones that I'm showing you now and then uh, finally shape dynamics set the pin pressure and this is gonna be more if you're creating like a oh I gotta take that dual brush off yeah this is gonna be more if you're trying to create more of a, uh, a pen stroke So you can see that, and it, it basically took all the texture away. Uh, it might make, you know, for a good inking brush. Um, why is the opacity down? I guess I would take the transfer off. Yeah, it's actually not a bad inking brush. I kind of like that line. It, uh, it's resembling of more of a, uh, um, a paintbrush, actually. So that's that's kind of neat. So, so that's that's how you play with them and get them. And you see, I just you know started with that little nasty little blob there. Um, now the other ones that I did, uh, this one, it's, it's real simple, uh, great great for doing hair. And I'm going to show you that real quick. So you can see, let me just zoom that up. All I did was you know fill in some dots. Again, to recap, I I used a 500 by 500 pixel uh, area. I went to edit, define brush preset. I gave it a name. And you know this, these were just dots, right? So now, you know, there's there's my little dots, which you know is kind of cool by itself. I could see using this for some Kirby crackle and some, you know, again some more comic booky stuff right there. But the other thing is, you just take it over here, transfer both set the pen pressure, opacity jitter, and flow jitter to pen pressure. That's it. I mean, I can go into some more stuff, but that's really all you do right there. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. I'm a liar. Go back in there. There's one other thing. I keep forgetting it defaults to a little bit of spacing. Take the spacing off. You know, which this is cool, again, for another texture, but now watch. See how it's, it's already got a good hair, you know, effect to it. I always paint with a little bit less opacity, and I'll show you why. <clears throat> see how it immediately starts to kind of look like hair you know um, the other thing you want to do is toggle back and forth your uh, your size of your brush to get some variance in there and the reason I got that opacity dropped is just so the more that I overlap that and overlay it that I'm building more texture and then you know some are swayed back the other way and I start looking for tones and value that are starting to look uh, more depthy. And then I'll take the um, uh, dodge tool. I can, oh, I'll actually just use a soft airbrush for this. And then I'll go across this way and bring out some of those highlights and the, the strands of the hair. I'll go back to the brush. Now the other thing is this too, you know, once you get your settings just the way you like it, you know, because you're going to, you're going to play with this stuff and you're, you're going to sometimes get a setting just right, you're going to close that brush out and then you're going to go back to it and those settings are going to be back to the default. So the other thing is this, once you do get it set the way you like it, resave the brush, rename it to something more specific and say, you know, hairbrush just the way I like it, whatever, you know, whatever something that you're going to remember and I've got to be really silly and specific with mine because I, I, I'll just forget, you know, and I, I got to remind myself. So, so there's that. I hit X. I go back and forth, and I usually want to go back to the white. I even tone it down a little bit more until I do the final strands, and now I go back and I just kind of keep painting this in until I get, you know, the hair, you know, the hair look that I'm going for. And right at the very end speed this up because I spent a little bit of time getting here just to look right but and it's right at the very end I up the opacity I turn the brush size way down and I do these little these little flips and strands you know give it a little bit more realism or texture or whatever and that's it so that quick you know I made some hair and it was um, it was you know a stipple you know just a bunch of little dots 
is like the best hairbrush I've seen. So uh, nothing advanced there. Real easy to understand and easy to make and easy to use. So I'll recap on the settings. T uh, transfer with pin pressure and, uh, I'm sorry, opacity jitter and flow jitter, both set the pin pressure. Then you go to brush tip shape, drop the spacing if you want less texture. If you want more texture, you up your spacing. Um, and that's that's really it. I mean, and, and you know, that's not great. I would keep, you know, finessing that and getting it right. Probably add more highlights through here. Uh, and keep pushing the form, you know, back and forth until I get it as depthy as I want. Um, but yeah, that's my uh, quick tutorial on how to make some brushes. What I'll probably do too is I'll take these brushes that I made. I uh, just made a bunch right here. A couple of these were cool. A couple, you know, were no big deal. Um, I, I like this one right here. This is my chalk brush that comes with Photoshop. Um, I use that for 90% of my work. So with the settings I showed you here and that, that's a great brush, you know. Um, so at any rate, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, save some of these brushes and put them on my DeviantArt. You can find that at ramstudios1.deviantart. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. If you learned anything, let me know. And if you think there's something else that I could show you that would be better suited, uh, let me know that too. Uh, like us on Facebook at Ram Studio Comics. And thank you for watching. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. See ya.